Thank you guys, it's great to be back in Prague. We've been traveling a lot, uh, made a lot of good contacts around Central America, which I think is, will be critical for the future development of Liberland, not only in diplomatic terms, but maybe also in the terms of, of more territory for Liberland in future. But i um, just wondering, I guess most of you have heard about Liberland before this lecture. I'm quite happy that I know uh, a lot of faces. So I don't have to go through the basic information about Liberland, but I will just give you a, a little bit of uh, what is going on and what is, what is new. And also that we have a very nice uh, and uh, good <laughs> setup uh, for our institution, which should be the main uh, thing for my lecture. Of course, you know that Liberland is seven square kilometers. It is almost exactly seven square kilometers, which is quite amazing if you consider that it's been actually a nature that has done that. Uh, we are located between Croatia and Serbia. This is how it looked when we stick the flag there. And uh, the great information is that there is still no other country claiming Liberland. Uh, despite some issues that we had with, with Croatia, Croatia doesn't claim this territory, Serbia doesn't claim this territory even after two years of existence of Liberland. And we founded it on 13th of April because it was birthday of Thomas Jefferson. We wanted to invoke the spirit of American Revolution. We wanted to make, to set the people free, to find a new land for people that want to live in freedom. And of course I was inspired by great thinkers like uh, Bastiat like Molinari. You probably know that he had a birthday a couple, couple days ago and I, I guess I don't have to remind you of how great these ideas were and that it was more than 250 years ago that they have put them up. And uh, the idea of course was to make a minarchist government, to make a nice example how a minarchist government could work, but maybe you know go even further. Just like Molinari went a little bit further with his ideas about the government, we wanted to go a little bit further as well. So we said, we've got one building there in Liberland, and this is how we are going to fix it, right? We want to have there a couple people that will take care of justice, some policemen, and a couple of diplomats, and that's it. That's how we will limit the government. Maybe a little bit, you know, a couple people will be sitting in the assembly, just like we have in our constitution, 20 people to represent, to have a representative body, to be more compatible with the outer world. And we want to explore how we can actually uberize the services that state normally provides. So we are actually looking into making a uber-like police, uh, uber-like justice, and uh, you know, actually go a little bit further and try to put market even into these services. After having a couple of policemen, that will be there on a regular basis, then allow its own citizens to become policemen after some basic authorization and use a mobile app to basically show their presence in the area and be on the place when, when needed by other citizens. And by the way, this is already in development, the e-residency mobile app, you can download it for Android, it will soon be for iPhone. And, and you can not only offer justice services there, not only uh, police services, but any kind of service at the moment. But it still needs a little bit of fine tuning, but this is what we are doing. We want to find a way how even a minarchist government can work on an Uber-like application. And, uh, you know, Liberland is actually quite nice place. We've got lots of sandy beaches, and I will pitch, pitch to you how you can visit Liberland in only 27 days from now uh, with the whole delegation. And uh, the idea was, of course, that it doesn't make sense to fight the existing reality. It's much better to start something new, uh, to start something from the scratch and be a good example for others. So what do you need to have a country? The Montevideo creation, uh, criteria say that you need to have a population, defined territory, government, and capacity to enter into relation with other states. And there is a very good article about the fact that we are fulfilling this criteria already by Chicago Journal of International Law. You can find it in our brochure, it's online, or you can get it downstairs in our booth. Uh, and yes, we have a population, we've got almost half million people interested in getting Liberland citizenship. Uh, actually, it might be much more, but we never were able to go through 200,000 emails that came the first week when we started Liberland. 
So we decided to make a, a regular form for applying of the people. We never expected that there would be so, much, so many people in just the first couple of days. And we, we are now, after filtering, uh, we've got some almost 120,000 people that are eligible for citizenship. And there is also 65, 68,000 businessmen that want to move their business into Liberland, which is pretty big. And uh, yes, we have a territory there. We've got nice cadastral maps, uh, state of art. We are also cooperating with blockchain companies to make our cadastral registry on blockchain. So we fulfill that criteria as well. Uh, if you look into cadastral maps of Croatia, you see there is a white space. Also officially, they don't claim this piece of land. And Serbia already stated they don't mind creation of Liberland on this territory, which is great. And we've got a government, uh, another criteria. Of course, we have a Minister of Justice, uh, a finance here, Jan Pulkrabek, who is with us. I don't see him right now, but right there. You can <laughs> talk to him. And we've got other members. Uh, each one of them comes from a different country. A Minister of Interior, uh, Dennis Spears, is a great guy. He was working for a number of governments before. Uh, he's taking his post seriously. Uh, and we've got Alexander Borodi, who is the chairman of our Economic Council, one of the most active business angels, as the chairman of e Liberland Economic Advisory Council. Uh, and we've got Thomas Walls as our foreign minister, who is a very skilled diplomat, who has been working for the embassy uh, in uh, Berlin. Uh, he was working for American diplomacy. He was the one helping with Daytona agreements. So we do have people who have very uh, good uh, background for these jobs. And uh, yes, we also, and um, this is one of the things that will be out very soon, uh, these ministries are breaking, they're producing different report, reports. You will be able to read the report about the finances last year. Uh, you see that our, our government is running, is running on pretty low budget if you compare to other governments. Uh, and uh, we actually have a pretty large budget surplus. I think we are number fourth in the world with 10% of budget surplus. Uh, so we spend around $225,000 uh, since uh, the beginning of Liberland. And, uh, but honestly, if you look into what makes a country a country, this is of course a great, great quote. You can have a, a real country unless you have a beer and an airline. It helps if you have some kind of football team or some nuclear weapons, but at the very least you need to have a beer. And it's, it's a great uh, thank you. I think you already had a chance to taste it yesterday. Uh, who did taste Liberland beer just to, okay. Great, okay, there is, okay, let's say 15 people, but you, you should taste it uh, later on. Uh, we do have a, uh, another, there's this actually a, a second, this was the first one, this is another one that you were able to taste yesterday. There is Liberland Airline, which is operating, and it started only 11 days after Liberland was formed, which was pretty amazing. And the great thing about it is that now we are going to have also jet in the fleet, uh, I hope uh, soon, but before before the summer holidays, so it will be another great step forward. And we have enormous number of great individuals and experts in different fields. 1,200 architects have applied for citizenship of Liberland. And some of them are pretty famous. Uh, for example, Patrick Schumacher, he is one of the most famous world architects. He is the CEO of the Zaharit Architectural Studios. Unfortunately, you might know that Zahadi herself died, but she, she was probably the most famous female architect in the world. And they said, that's great, you found a new country, we'll help you guys. We'll organize architectural competition. We actually received more than 85 entries into that competition. Uh, some of them are um, precise architectural concepts. I really like this one in Argentina, but you can see the others in our brochure as well, or online if you want. And, uh, we just deployed one of those urban concepts uh, in our cadastral maps, but just to give a little bit uh, better idea for the investors how Liberland could be divided. But we are not into urban planning yet. Uh, we, won't, we are actually looking into free market urban planning and that's what Patrick Schumacher is expert in and that's why he joined Liberland in so early days. And we also have uh, possibility to enter into relations with other nations. We actually have more representative offices than, for example, Slovakia right now, which is not bad if you, if you consider. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, our representative uh, from Slovakia of Liberland is actually with us here today. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I just got back from Honduras and from Dominican Republic, so there are two more green spots on the map. Uh, so it's getting greener and greener, so it's, I think it's 90 right now. And we, you know, some of the people, just to name a few, for example, representative in Qatar, Sohar Zaber, is one of the most famous business uh, women in the region. Or Richard Holson, who joined us recently for Bahamas and Bermuda. He owns one of the biggest insurance companies in the US. So we do have very well connected uh, diplomats and individuals in business that represent us worldwide. And we've got also good contacts with politicians around the world. Uh, Different people showed support, uh, met me, uh, are looking forward to work with us in the future. Hans Adam, Gary Johnson said that he will recognize Liberland as the first thing when, once he gets elected, right? It, 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 didn't, it didn't really happen, but on the other hand, it was great that he was showing this kind of support and that he was actually the third most likely person to become president. And just by the way, we do have a lot of good contacts with the Trump's administration. A lot of people that are in parts of that administration were in contact with us before Liberland was formed. And for example, Syed Kamal invited me for a meeting. He is chairman of European Conservatives and Reformists in the European Parliament. We've got more than 12 members of parliament that are supportive of Liberland right now. And we are going to start Friends of Liberland in European Parliament pretty soon. So that's going to be interesting. I, you know, I, I made my presentation a little bit short, so I just showed you that we are basically fulfilling the basic criteria for a country. But there is a lot of work to be done, especially on our institutions and also on the settlement itself. So that's why we, for example, bought this boat, which will be permanently stationed in Liberland uh, beginning the summer. And uh, you'll be able to visit. Uh, that's uh, like a first thing that will be there uh, full time. Uh, despite some issues that we have with Croatian police. And we do have a plan to have a bigger, even bigger presence with this boat and uh, kind of container houses on top of it, which can be deployed on Liberland soil anytime. And uh, I would like to invite you uh, and talk to, and of course 25 minutes is not, en not enough to talk about details about Liberland institutions. Uh, but I would love to invite you to Liberland's second anniversary, which will be on 14th to 16th of April. We are going actually to take the boat from Budapest and we are going to head to Liberland and go back to Budapest so you can visit Budapest as well. Uh, we are going to be there in four hours, which is because, oh, okay, there are two more speakers that I wanted to show you, for example, that you will be able to meet. We've got now 15 speakers on the conference, Dan Mitchell and Ivan Pernar. Ivan Pernar is member of Croatian parliament. But I wanted to show you this. This is how we're going to get there uh, in only four hours from Budapest to Liberland. So it's going to be fun. Uh, it, it actually drives 70 kilometers per hour. So uh, it's the fastest ride you can get. And we are going to also introduce uh, Liberland national sport, which is, which is jet surf. I'm quite happy that the founder of that sport is quite supportive and that he likes the idea that it will be liberal and national sport. So we will be accompanied by jet surfs, which by the way, have the top speed of 70 kilometers per hour as, as well, so they can, they can follow the boat pretty fast. So, you know, I'm, I don't know how much more minutes do I have. I don't want to, uh, we can either, 15? 50? 15, okay, so I was a little bit faster than anticipated, but um, I would be very happy, first of all, to answer a couple of questions, and if there is a chance, I would be happy to take the picture with you in front of the stairs outside, if we have a couple more minutes. Well, this is, this is exactly what, what uh, the main task uh, is, which is ahead of us. We have to form the full functional legal system. We do have, for example, law that uh, already uh, c controls Liberland police. Uh, Liberland police has uniforms. 
We do have first individuals that want to take that task. Uh, we also have first candidates for being judges in Liberland. So all of these things are on the agenda this year. And I'm, what we are doing right now, we are getting more individuals that are interested in forming these basic institutions. And we are getting them on board. And for example, one of the major tasks is also to get a new Minister of Justice. So it's great that I'm on this school, which uh, is, uh, uh, I think, a, a nest for new uh, lawyers and people who would be interested to help finalize Liberland legal system. We now have constitution, which I think is 99% finished. We need to implement a little bit more ideas of the private cities, uh, which I think uh, are going to be the future of governance, but we actually took the best ideas from Republic and combined them with private cities. But we need somebody who will really like and, and uh, uh, finish the concept. And we have five laws now, right now, but we probably need like 15 altogether. And so there are four more laws in, uh, in process, but I think we need somebody strong who can really uh, have fun uh, finalizing uh, the legal system of Liberland. So it, it needs a little bit of more fine tuning. And also, we need people that will go and be the first judges in Liberland. So if you're interested, uh, then I would uh, ask you to step ahead. All right. You know the, the the thing about, of course, the thing about opening up businesses. It's a, it's a whole uh, issue itself. We've got now commercial registry, uh, which is uh, starting to operate these days. It's in beta testing for now, but also the law for incorporating companies is close to finishing. So the deadline is on Friday. Many things are close to finishing, but they need a little bit of fine tuning, and it's kind of. Interesting also how many people talk about libertarianism, but it, in the end it's hard to find the people that will do the job itself. So I think, you know, if you have a good idea how, how for example, company registry should work in a libertarian country, we would really like to welcome you on board and, and see your ideas. We have now five people working on that task, but it would be better to have 15 maybe as, as members of that board under the Ministry of Justice. Well, you can talk to me directly. I think it would be better. One more question. Out of the basic area, which are necessary for the statehood, do you see the lack of international recognition? If it's for the diversity of our instance from Liechtenstein, we are also highly happy, but both Switzerland and Austria recognize them. So my question is, wouldn't it be a better idea to sign the agreement, for instance, with Croatia and establish something like a Hong Kong, which is uh, autonomous region, you know, with more, more liberty than with the mainland itself, but which is uh, actually recognized. And in the, by this means, you will achieve an end that you would have the region with the free economy, with the very low taxes, and so on and so on. But uh, when with this certain future, so we can advocate the social. Well, it's you know one thing which is interesting. For example, Czech Republic didn't Licht recognize Liechtenstein only four years ago. It was uh, unrecognized five years ago when it finally li recognized Liechtenstein. So recognition is of course for the whole uh, lecture. But yes, that's what is very important to have good relation with our neighbors. That's why we have addressed Croatian Parliament a month ago. My speech was read there. Uh, we got a, a lot of information back from that. Uh, we also met a couple members of government in Croatia. We were working with one of the presidential candidates in Serbia who was, who was pushing the idea of economic free trade zones inside of Serbia and she was also fully supportive of, of Liberland and she, unfortunately she stepped down two days ago so she, she's no longer running. But I hope we will uh, Co work with her even in the future and that these ideas of starting hey, hello Ivan uh, of starting a Hong Kong like uh, land right uh, next to uh, between these two countries it will have a fertile land and that we will get more politicians on board so that's that's what we are doing and that we want to actually the liberal land is not only about 
of course, this certain area, we want to have a nice system which can be copied elsewhere. So we would like to create like a small franchise basically for building these Hong Kong types entities. But we are different from economic zones. We are going full force sovereignty. We are not coming with an idea that we will be subject to other uh, somebody else sovereignty. We are going all the way. <laughs> all right, please. Well, that's what is interesting about Liberland, uh, that we've got a voluntary tax system. So a, a part of couple of fees, which you will have to pay, for example, to start your company, if you want to have it incorporated in Liberland, uh, there are no mandatory taxes. But that doesn't mean that you are not required to contribute to the society you're living in. You will be able to decide, okay, I don't like the way police is working, I will put a little bit money there. Or I will start, start a crowdfunding uh, campaign for this type of thing or this type of thing. So uh, that's, that's one of the things uh, which, is, uh, which is very much different from other countries, but honestly, I think it's the future. It's the future of the world because, of course, these systems, just like Hong Kong is proving that it's very efficient and the whole idea was spread in the whole China, basically. Uh, the, the voluntary tax system, I think, will also prove to be very functional in Liberland and it will sp spread later on. And what we are doing now, if you want to become citizens, we actually require you to collect merits, which are points uh, for helping uh, to grow the country. If you collect 5,000 merits, then you become, you become a citizen right now. Uh, I think it's a good way. We actually require people to deliver Liberland some value before they get the citizenship. So you can work for Liberland anyhow, with your any type of expertise, join any of the expert group or become representative or become part of the government to get the citizenship. That is not that it's very easy if you have some knowledge in some area. Or you can donate five thousand dollars, you get five thousand merits and you become citizen as well. Well, I do have well, I do have it downstairs, but I, I do have already six stamps from different countries do, doing the border crossing, which was very nice that it was so easy to to get over the border uh, with that. But of course, officially, we haven't exchanged uh, the protocols with any country yet. But I can tell you there are a couple of countries on the way that we are working on. Cool. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I have a question. I haven't heard anything about the um, armed forces, which uh, I suppose is one of the crucial attributes of any state. So, my Not question is uh, how does the authorities of the Liberal Land plan to uh, protect their independence? Well, First of all, 10 countries on this planet don't have any armed forces. They have just security forces. I have been, I've just visited Costa Rica, which doesn't have any armed forces. For example, Liechtenstein also has an agreement with Switzerland for protection. We will have to come with some kind of agreement and we already proposed something to Croatia or Serbia. Both of these countries are vital for the protecting the, the territory of Liberland. So yes, that's one of, the, one of the major steps in the future. But also I would like to point out one more thing. We've got a head of IT development here, Jakub Andries. So if you have expertise in the IT sector, we are managing a number of projects, not only, not only the registry of the land, not only the cadastral maps, not only uh, the e-residency, for example, but there are many other projects on the way that you can join. And we want to have one of the best IT systems that uh, would be a nice example for other countries and we would like to have many of these things on the blockchain. <laughs>